I got a bad feeling on this one, all right? I mean, I got a bad feeling. Everybody got to die sometime, Red. Your love is rated X. That means you extra, extra, extra. What's up, motivators? Welcome back. It's Kevin. This is Pure Bullfit. Right off the bat, I want to apologize if you hear barking in the background. My landlord lives next door. He's got a beagle named Arrow, and he is very excitable. So when I'm recording and he's around, he kind of loses his mind a little bit. With that out of the way, what we're going to do today is a little bit different than what we normally do. It's not quite a roast. It is not quite a bullshit of the week, but it is something that I saw that I feel like needs addressing. We're going to talk about a variation that Larry Wheels, a very popular strength athlete, put out there for people doing the decline bench press. Niners! Hell yeah! Oh shit! Fuck yeah. Hey! You had one job. Just the one. Now before anybody loses their mind and tries to drag me over the coals, Larry seems like a really nice guy. Everybody that I know who has ever met him or had the opportunity to train with him says that he's a nice guy. He's very down to earth and he's got a good personality and a lot of what he puts out there, while a bit, you know, on the braggadocious side, while bent towards PRs and feats of strength, isn't necessarily bad information. But in this instance, with this particular variation where he works with Bradley Martin, I don't feel that for his half a million followers on YouTube alone and his millions of followers elsewhere, that he does quite a good enough job of saying, this is not for intermediate, this is not for beginner lifters. So here, take a look at what I mean. So we're doing a decline bench variation. I saw it the other day, Yeah. but it was just after hitting climb bench. I tried it, it didn't feel too good, but he said it feels easier, so. Yeah, it feels easy. Cause it's just like a, it's just small range of motion. So essentially what we have here is a variation on the decline bench press. Decline bench is what people use for overload their pressing movements, to put as much weight as possible on for the limited range of motion. However, what's recommended here in the absence of a legitimate decline bench is to put your feet directly on the bench. And I, I feel that that's a very unstable position. If you take a look at Bradley Martin, who's a big dude, and Larry Wheels, who's obviously a big dude, neither of them are overly tall, but even they still have difficulty fitting on this bench. And in the footage that I share with you here in a little bit, you'll see that somebody of my size, six foot three, has even more trouble fitting on the bench, making this a safe exercise for overloading movements. Niners! Hell yeah! Oh shit! Fuck yeah. Way easier. Fuck yeah. Push! Push! Hell yeah. More. Run! Hit it, dude! When we take a look at what Bradley Martin here is doing, several reps at 405 pounds, you'll see that his feet are very unstable and almost slip off even with a non-slip pad at the end of that bench. So naturally, my big concern here is what happens if your feet do slip off the bench. Really doesn't matter how strong your spotter is, it's unlikely that they're going to be able to help you catch 105, 110, 120% of your normal flat bench one rep max before it falls significantly fast enough to cause you serious harm. Your shoulders are at risk, your chest, your neck, Shit like this happens all the time with standard variations that don't have this level of risk. So what I thought I'd do, instead of just simply complaining about another YouTuber putting out something that is not appropriate or advisable for the vast majority of their audience, I would go ahead and I would recommend an alternative to this. If you don't have a decline bench press available to you, but you do have a power rack, there is something that you can do to incorporate this kind of overload with this range of motion. All right, real quick, let's show you what I'm talking about. I'm only six foot three, and this is a standard size bench. As you can see, I don't fit very well on it at all. It's extremely easy for my feet to slip off with no weight on the bar. I'm not hamming this up. This is literally all of the room that I had. Under a really heavy load, you can see why this would be a problem. Since stability is our main issue here, what the hell do we do about it? The floor press is significantly more stable than the variation that Larry shared in his video, but it denies you the opportunity to overload because of a lack of leg drive or a proper range of motion. 
but there's something that you can do from this position that solves both of those issues. If you raise your hips and bring your feet back, you mimic the same range of motion, the same angle to your torso that you experience in a proper decline bench press or even the variation that Larry shares. Your elbows are able to travel past your body because you've raised your torso up. You're able to spread your feet wider, allowing you a more stable base, and you don't have to worry about slipping off of a slick, flat surface and possibly hurting yourself. So it's pretty clear to see that this is a much more stable position to press from than the variation shared in Larry's video, and really the only thing left is to demonstrate that we can properly overload with this technique as well. And that's what we're gonna do next. Recently, I'm good for about three reps at 315 pounds on the flat bench, and here you'll see me go through five pretty quick, but you can tell that I'm overloading because I start to shake. I might have got six, maybe even seven if I was willing to really push it and go for it, but that wasn't necessary to demonstrate that this is an effective overload technique. So there you have it guys, a simple fix to what I view as an unnecessary risk. And if you made it this far in this short video and you still got your panties in a twist, just try to relax. I'm a fan of the guy too. I just think that when you're speaking to literally millions of people, you have a burden of responsibility to be careful about the message that you put out there. If it's not appropriate for the vast majority of your audience and you're presenting it as a variation, it's incumbent upon you to narrow the scope of the people who should be using it. And while the exercise that Larry and Bradley present in their video might be acceptable for them, I strongly believe it is not appropriate for beginner or intermediate lifters. That's just my two cents on it. All right, guys, that's the video for today. If you like the content, go ahead and let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Your love is rated X. That means you're extra, extra.